South Africa, welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Varim Buli. And I'm Bonag Matiba. We're live on SABC3. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's going to be another hour of all things inspiration, right? Yeah, it's Inspiration Tuesday. And today we've invited into the lot some young women who are doing some community development with their profiles. And the first up is Nomsa Mazwai, who's mm. not only a musician and an activist, but she's just altogether an insanely amazing young woman. Absolutely. And we also have the very, very inspirational Penny Libian, who earlier on this year took part in the trek for a Mandela challenge, she climbed Kilimanjaro all for a good cause. That so is she, incredible. Very incredible. Yeah. Can't wait to chat to her. She is in the loft. Do remember, we are live. So make sure that you hashtag us at uh, Afternoon Express and follow us at Afternoon Chat. Talking about Penny, she's actually standing by in the kitchen right now with Jenny. I've got her here with me. Welcome to our loft. Kilimanjaro Thank must you, have lady. been absolutely amazing. I'm dying to find out about your trip. But one, one thing that I love so much about Penny is she's so down to earth and so humble. I'm like, oh, you look incredible. Your dress is amazing. And she looks at me and she goes, it's Valentino. <laughs> I didn't say that! I love you. You're so sweet. <laughs> Today we are having mad fun in the loft. We're also going to be having a load of fun in the kitchen. We have the gorgeous Mbali and Giri with us, and we are cooking up a whole lot of uh, coconut today. A little bit later, we're going to be making coconut macaroons, and now we're making coconut prawns. Yes. Quite Asian. Yes, it is. And we have... Is that the finished product? That is the finished product, and it's going to taste amazing once you've finished here. Um, it's going to taste very, not spicy, but very... Yeah. Well, we're using awesome. the sriracha mayonnaise yes. here. Mm -hmm. So um, ever, ever since the show, I'd never had sriracha in my entire life. And then when we started with the show, I found out about it from Woolies, yeah. and now it's all I have. Remember, you can cook with us too. All you need to do is visit our website. Go and check on your phone immediately, afternoonexpress.co.za. There you'll get a shopping list and, of course, our recipe. But should we start cooking now? Let's, yes. get, cooking. Let's get cooking. I think yeah. the girls will look hungry today in the loft. <laughs> How do we start? Okay, so what we're going to do is... Okay, let's take our prawns out box yeah get that sorted uh, lovely so these were frozen so now they're yes. defrosting <laughs> my fingers are gonna smell great later <laughs> okay so what we're gonna do um we're going to mix the coconut mm -hmm. and the panko crumbs together this is what are be panko crumbs Panko crumbs are it's like fake bread crumbs. It's, it's yeah, it's bread crumbs, and the reason why these are so special is because of the flakes. Okay. And it gives it a nice texture, and it makes it really nice and crispy, unlike normal bread crumbs. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can almost see mm. it's that same kind of yeah. jagged crumb mm. that you always see on the tempura. Yeah. So we're gonna mix that together along with the sriracha seasoning. Lovely. Got to put. Quite a bit of mm. it. Make it. Looks it nice like it's quite sriracha. salty in there as well. Yeah. Salt and so spices. Mix that up. Okay. Do you mind mixing no, the water? No, tell me what to do. The water and the yours. eggs together. Okay, with okay. a whisk. With a whisk, yes. Okay. And so then a little bit of water mm -hmm. in the egg, and I'm going to fluff it up. Fluff it up really good. Okay. That's it. And then what I'm going to do is Expert. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to dip the prawns in the flour first. Oh, do we go flour? Oh, I suppose because yeah. they are a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. Then egg, then... Then egg, then panko, and then we're going to deep fry them. Okay, so is this already, that's already hot. Yeah. Okay. So from there... Now we're cooking. Okay, let's just do a few more. Do you want me to throw it in yes, please. while we go? Yes, please. Okay, oh, this is great. Mm. This is like fun. Okay, there you so go. Let's just do this. Got the okay. little prawn. Going to District 9. <laughs> there you go. And must I throw it in the pot? Can we just do 111? Or? Oh, yeah, we can do 111. Okay. And we can, I can go. that in the pot, yes. I'm About. frying the bronze. Okay. Our Thank little you. assembly line. Yeah, we've got a whole production line yeah. here. This is great. And prawns are such a fantastic, tasty fish. They really or are. Crustacean, I suppose. And it's great Yummy. for parties, nice party food. Yes. Christmas is coming up, so it's a great time to serve that. Exactly. Mm. Just as a little canapé as your yep. guest arrives, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay I don't do know if I'm doing this correctly. Know, you're doing such a great Should job. Should we start the sriracha mayo now? Yes. Because that's something I want to... Okay. Cool. Just toss those Okay, prawns. Until they're nice and golden brown. 
There you go. Yeah. That one's looking extra crispy. Cool. <laughs> okay. Now the mayonnaise. So, How do we get started? Okay. What are we going to do with the mayo? We're just going to put some into the bowl. And it just depends on how much sriracha you would want in your mayo. Yeah. And in this uh, case... simple. Yeah, it's very simple. So it's so just normal. So if you want it quite spicy, then you can make it mm, super spicy. Super spicy. Okay. And just depending on how much you want. In this case, sriracha is always a nice thing. So, some <laughs> boy. <laughs> Gualita. <laughs> yeah. Galela <laughs> this. There you go. <laughs> Yummy. Mm. Nice. There you go. And then that's basically just serve like that mm. and then dip. With now, lime. With lime. With squeeze squeeze lime, lime or there. lemon, and then voila. This looks so good. I think you'll be forgiven for double dipping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, we chat to the energetic and inspiring singer, poet, and activist, Nom Summer's wife. We'll be right back after this. Express yourself. Give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express here on SABC3. Born in Soweto, she not only sings for the soul, but also speaks for those who cannot speak for themselves. Having been the president of the Fort Hare University Students' Representative Council, gaining a Fulbright scholarship, presenting at the United Nations on behalf of South Africa and winning the South African Music Awards Best Adult Alternative African, her achievements speak for themselves. Joining us on the couch is artist and activist Nom Samazwai. Nomi! Hi, Welcome buddy. to the love, <laughs> Nomi Superstar. Nom Nomi <laughs> Superstar to me. This is so surreal for me because uh, I know you as little Nomi because I know. you're my best friend's younger sister and you literally grew up in front of me. And I'm I now know. sitting here interviewing you because you're such a phenomenal woman. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations <laughs> for being asked to perform at the United Nations I National know, Assembly. Right? What was that like? What did you feel like when they told you to come? Okay, it was, you know, life was really amazing, no? Um, at, the, at that time, <laughs> <laughs> at that time in my life, I, I must say I was going through, like, a rough period. And then I just get this phone call, and this guy's like, hi, I'm calling from the president of the UN's office. And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> And he was you, like, like, straightened up your yeah, clothes. Yeah, I was like, like, I was like <clears throat> okay. And then he was like, we'd like you to come and sing at the United Nations. And I was like, shut up. What? <laughs> I know Tessa was there. She was watching me. And I was like... Because <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, it was really... And being there and performing, what, an what did honor. that feel like? Oh, my goodness. It was incredible. First of all, they were treating me five-star the whole way. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, no. I got picked up in a limo. <laughs> And I was staying at this incredible hotel, uh, number one UN Plaza. Oh so it my was, gosh. It was just one of those experiences where you're just like, is this my life? You know, yeah, and you yeah. look around and you just count your blessings, you know? Well, this is your life and it's absolutely amazing because you're also an author. You, are, you have a master's in um, political <laughs> development. Yes. Economics. Yes. You have a, an album that's topping the charts on Kai FM. Yes. How do you fit it all in? Um, I just wake up and do, you know, I just wake up and I, and I, and I just do, I do all the things that I feel I want to do, the things that inspire me, the things that make my life worth living, you know, yeah, you've got yeah. to live your life and that means your life, like the one that's for you, not like what people want you to live or what people want you to be, you've really just got to live your life and yeah, yeah. so I mean when I look back, I mean I'll be honest, when I look back at my life I really can't believe a lot of the things that I've been so blessed to have been able to do. Um, I can't believe I have a master's but I'm not really, I'm using it like kind of. <laughs> How does that meet you, Nomi the artist? Um, so I had very influential parents, should yes, I say that? Yes, and they were very political minded as well. Yes, yes, yes. But I mean, they were influential in my life and my right, choices. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So um, my dad always wanted me to study. And so what I did is I picked something that I could study while I did my music. I always was just like, I want to pick things that I can do when I'm, when I'm doing my music as well. And economics, believe it or not, is one of the things that in my life I've really found it easy to find the logic. Oh, stop it, stop I it. I know. I, people out there watching you <laughs> want to murder you right now because I can't believe you just said that. You know what? It's all about logic, economics. So you can get away with not 
like toiling away with your books. You know? <laughs> really? Can you? <laughs> you can. Okay. You know, yeah. I did. <laughs> Yeah, I but did. that's because you're a genius and you're brilliant. I did, I and did. And then you were the first female president of the SRC at Forte University. I Come was, on. I was, I was. And what emotions does it evoke in you seeing that there's a woman at the helm of the Fees Must Stop, um, Fees Must Fall yeah. campaign that has b basically changed our country's history? I, I, I'm just so happy that it's finally happening. This is a conversation that's been happening in universities for years. For years. When I was SRC president 2006-2007, this was one of the biggest issues that students were facing. I mean, not only do students not have the money for fees, they don't have enough money to buy their food, they don't have enough money to buy books, they don't have enough money to buy toiletries. And those are the kinds of issues. People don't understand that in order to be at university, you need to be able to access that space. And if you're going into class hungry, you're not accessing education. So even though, you know, your fees might have been paid for, you know, if you're hungry, you're not really concentrating. Your atmosphere is not enabling you. Your or if you don't have money for roll-on, I mean, there's a lot of social dynamics, oh, you know, sure. of yeah. being feeling yeah. alienated. And I think what was key was when one of the students said they feel alienated in the university. They feel like they're not, they don't belong there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think this fees must fall is going to really interrogate those issues. I think people have realized that it's not only about not paying fees. It's about the idea of university and what a university is there for. And what, is, what, is, what are we supposed to achieve with them? For me, I think the best people go to university, the critical thinkers. Um, I, I, I appreciate that I got to study so far. But as you can see, I'm an artist. You're an artist, darling. <laughs> so and now it's like and please somebody else really should have had that yeah. opportunity. It should be for critical thinkers, people that are going to take this country forward with innovation, um, you know, really, people that are, are, are inspired are thinking by thinking. And progressive, yeah, yeah. Um, and that means and that brave. we might not all get in, you know. Mm -hmm. Daddy Warbucks might be able to afford for you. <laughs> but if you are not in the top one percentile <laughs> of the <laughs> academic thinkers... <laughs> Tell me about that. Nomi the musician. <laughs> what is your music about? Um, my music is about politics uh, because I, I am socially engaged. Uh, my music is about love because I'm a lover of love. I just love love. Like one of my songs in Gwe says, Umba we and dikata and which yep. basically means if you're tricking me, then it's okay. <laughs> I like Let's the way you're tricking well. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but my music is really just about that, just about, you know, what I'm experiencing, what I'm yeah, going through yeah. as a young South African. The sound itself is a, is a mix. I grew up listening to different artists. You can hear that in my music. I listen to David Bowie. I listen to Mire Makeba. I listen to Letambulu. I listen to Offspring. I listen to, like, you know, a you can... Variety, a whole variety. A whole variety of music. Yeah, yeah. Just because of... I had my sister's musical influence, but then I was also young, a young South African... Uh, just living amongst other South a Africans. Bon free. A born free. Kind of a, a born free, free. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I was exposed to and other music. And the aesthetic of, of Nomi, the artist, please take us through it. I absolutely love it. I mean, your wig is beyond. Hashtag Thank beyond. You. Hashtag flourishing. So all this of it. is all about the life that I live. This is called a bee do. A bee and do. Yes, it's a do made out of beads. And the story behind it is um, I'm a bee person and I'm a do person. Hmm. Um, I, I, I'm being in this world, I'm being myself, I'm being who I am, and I'm doing who I am as well. Um, the incredible Nondi Miso Ngosi makes them. She's this artist, she's amazing. Um, I'm so, so ordering some, just yeah, as no, a side Yeah, no, they're awesome, they're very cute, and you can definitely order on my website if you want. Awesome, what's your website? What's <laughs> my website is nomisuperstar.com, uh -huh. so it's okay. N-O-M-I-S-U-P-A-S-T-A.com. Okay. It's spelled like the way you say it, Nomi Supasta. Nomi Supasta. Yeah, I'm not Nomi Superstar. <laughs> I'm Nomi, Nomi Superstar. superstar. You, you also know? wrote this book called Shy Shy Little Girl. Yeah, so this book was, I wrote it while I was SRC president. So when I got voted while into... While you were doing, changing the world, doing all these <laughs> things, you just managed to fit in a little book that you wrote. You know what happened with that book is my dad, I called my dad. So basically, I was voted in as, as an independent. Okay. Um, and that really never happened at Forte. It was always Sasko or Pesma, you know, winning. 
And so I was an independent, and because I'd been working with students for so many years before that, a lot of students on campus knew me. And I also campaigned in every language on campus, which gave me... What? Yeah, no, I was thinking ahead. You were operating, <laughs> I was operating. So I got voted in as the first female SRC president, independent at the University of Forte. And of course, some people weren't having it. Um, and so Sasko on this one day, they came, 500 of them, outside my room on campus. Yo, they were singing. Like, not the best song. <laughs> I can't sing it on TV, okay, on okay. daytime TV. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but they were singing the song, and I was, and I was just shocked. I was like, oh, and I was just this little girl, you know. And there were 500 Sasco people outside my window. It's like a proper strike. I was like, they were like proper protesting against. Yes, yeah, it was a protest against. And you're me. like, guys, I'm just trying to live my life. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. And then I called my dad, and I was like, Dad, you won't believe what's happening. And I put the phone to the window. And I think my dad must have been really scared because it was like a Aww. massive mob. But he just said to me, oh my gosh, you should write a book about it. And literally, oh, wow. and that's what made it so easy for me to stay being president. Because whenever amazing things, and amazing things would happen to me, I mean, um, I, there was a stampede in one of the mass meetings. I mean, it was crazy. I had security on one day. I was like, dude, mm. you needed bodyguards. I needed out bodyguards. There. Um, but what, made, what the book did for me was whenever things would be happening that any other person would be scared or threatened by, I was always like, oh my God, what a great chapter. <laughs> like, what a great thing to write. And I just oh be like goodness, sitting there going, uh, can this strike end? Can this guy take the knife away from me? <laughs> so I can get home and tap it. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a positive attitude. But that's, that's where the book came from. And the book is really, if you read this book, it tells you about what's happening right now. Yes. It really yes. does say this is a ticking time bomb. Yeah. Because the realities, the right the right the writing was on the wall, you know what I mean? Um, the harbingers were all there. Yeah. yeah. The the yeah. signs were there, yeah. you know, you can't we couldn't continue like that. And it was just a matter of time. And it's good to read the book because you even see uh, how the EFF started in this book, wow. you know, because wow. I was, I was, and Forte is... Any chance of, of revising and relaunching the book? So I am actually thinking about that. Yeah. I'm working with a new editor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't really want to edit the book and change it a lot. When I was, I was young when I wrote it, and you can hear the naive... Your, your voice. The your, voice. Yeah, the voice of you. Know, youth, yeah. Like, what was the world? Why is this happening to what? me? <laughs> And I'm like a What's different... What's wrong with the world? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. why can't we all just get along? <laughs> you know, so now it's... Um... So where, pe where can people find it right now if they want so to read it? Actually, you can get everything Nomi Superstar on the Nomi Superstar on website. On your website, yeah. Um, there's a little form on the website, and really you write your message of what you want. Mm -hmm. If it's a CD, if it's a video, if it's a book, if it's a performance. If it's a hug. <laughs> Yeah, hugs we do at shows. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you know, this is this is the life that I choose, and wow, I'm living it. Wow, Nomi, I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you. I'm also, you know, I think it's been a journey of finding myself and really being happy with who I am and exploring the possibilities of, you know, just being your authentic self. Um, you know, when people see my makeup and they see my whole look. I mean, this is who I am. Your whole vibe, yeah. I, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is me. <laughs> this is you how know? I come. This is how I Take come. Take me as I am. <laughs> I'm always having a good wow, time. No, no. Um, I believe in positive energy. I believe in success. I'm a proud South African. Um, and I've had the opportunity to represent my country on the most amazing stages. I mean, in New York, when I played with the New York City Philharmonic, can wow. you believe I mean, that? Can you believe that? And then I played my second song with Paul Simon's band. I mean, oh, can actually, we I jazz? can't. I can't. Can but you can know what? Jazz? I know <laughs> that the best is even yet to come. Okay. Thank you. Make sure you stay tuned because Nomsa will be performing a bit later on the show. Express yourself. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. 
Welcome back. You're still watching SABC3. It's Afternoon Express. We are live and today we're celebrating inspirational and incredible South African women. She's a renowned television host, radio voice and an inspirational speaker. But what really makes her a remarkable woman is the work she does in community development. Uh, Penny Libiani Foundation was formed in 2012, which through mentorship programs at schools and higher learning institutes brings light to students in different career fields and also affords young people the opportunity to be guided both career-wise and on personal development. Joining us on the couch is the beautiful man, well, the woman behind it all, Penny Libiani. Welcome to The Loft. You're always the person doing the interviews, and now yeah. you're the other side. Does it feel <laughs> weird? Like just, it's feeling weird. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for having me on The Loft. It's very beautiful. Thank you uh, very much. So I felt the pressure of like, okay, I gotta look the Thank you for coming. To the loft. Is it weird? Because every morning you interview people, you've interviewed people for uh, the, you know, larger chunk of your career. How does it feel sitting on the other side? It's, it's, it's always weird, but I mean, if you see familiar faces, there's a little bit of comfort. Yeah, <laughs> so I you, know what yeah. you mean. So you're kind of like, okay, I think I'm in safe hands. I'll be okay. <laughs> well, I hope so. But yeah. you know what I want to know, first of all, is what motivates you? I mean, the one thing I love about you is longevity. I think... You Everybody knows how frivolous this industry is, how short-lived it is, and how your lifespan it is, 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 doesn't really last for a long time. So how have you managed to stay in there after all these years? I think I've tried to just, uh, you know, be still and, and keep on the ground and always remember why I got into it in the first mm. place. There's been moments uh, of doubt. Uh, there's been moments of, like, you know, where things spin around and then you, you find yourself, like, on the outside and you're like okay what happened to me i think i was in, in this lane part, yeah. you know um but more than anything else i mean you know i come from bush park ridge partly and then i grew up in soweto and then i got into it i got into this really because for the love of it and love of working with people because my career started yes. in, in community radio so i've always had that sense that i constantly have to look back and see how many are coming behind and me and then what kind of message can bring along yeah how many i can bring along what kind of message am i putting out there and then is it coming from like a an honest place or you know Am I just caught up in whatever else? And you, you do so much work with, you know, communities around the I country. Try. Would you say then that is where the inspiration came from? You know, first of all, to start the Penny Libiana Foundation, but to do just the, the programs that you do every single day. Well, it's, it's not really like every single day, but mm. like I, uh, I mean, when I first initially started, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do all these things. And then I, I didn't count in the fact that I have to keep a job. You have I to be to, a mom. I have to be a mom. <laughs> I have to, you know, rest, you know, yes. and keep a job. And then I realized that, okay, Penny, you're like really overexerting yourself. And it actually... I went to Bushbuck Ridge, went to schools, and I was trying to plant vegetable gardens. And then they said, okay, the kids need uniform. And then I wanted to buy school uniform. Uh -huh. And they said, there's no water. And I was like, Ooh, okay. okay, where am I going to get the water to do all of this? And then I realized that, you know what? I have access to platforms. Uh, I have a profile. Uh, I have a voice. Then what I can do is that I can just plug myself into organizations that are already doing that and use my profile and my voice and my, you know, to, face to work with them. So in come in organizations like uh, Caring for Girls, uh, which I did uh, Kilimanjaro with uh, this year. Uh, in, I mean, in, in come in organizations like uh, Action Aid, which I'm, I'm going to be doing more work with. And in come in organizations like, you know, You and Women, which I, mm. I did stuff with in Kenya just, uh, just recently. So it's finally, you know, sort of like making sense. Because initially... Yes. I I know what you mean. Because you know when you come from radio, you, you used to drive, I mean, I don't know if it's the case now. Yeah. You drive the desk yourself, you do, you, you know. You so I used, to, yourself, yeah, I used to do everything myself. Yeah. So then it, it realized that it, it just doesn't work, especially yeah. when you have kids and you have a life to live. So let's talk about the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the Trek for Mandela Challenge. I mean, which you, you were supposed to Which I was supposed, supposed to, to do. Summit, and, Jara for, and they said, <laughs> she put me the They said, when I'm submitting, I was like, okay, <laughs> this will have to wait and see. <laughs> but why did you decide to say yes to that? Because that is quite daunting. You were part but, of a group of celebrities who did it, you completed it, and you did it all for a good cause. Because I know what it's like to be a girl in a village and you have no access to sanitary wow. pads. My mom used to live in the city with my dad, and I lived with my grandmother. You get your periods, wow. and there's no one to talk to. And it's, it's not like just that conversation that comes from like UN because they want to throw that because oh it's so cute let's get these girls something it's real <laughs> you know you. I've seen people use newspapers I've seen people use um, you know a, 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 a tissue you know I've seen people use cloth so that is a reality for that girl in the village who might have lost their grandmother who might have um, their parents living with their grandmother mm. living with uncles that is a reality and in, when you go to those schools and you give those girls a sanitary packs that's going to last them for four months that means they can go to school they don't have to date some guy uh, that they don't like to be able to buy them a sanitary pad they don't have to worry about if mm. I, I don't come to school for like f you know 
four days uh, when I'm on my periods, and then which you know accumulates about 50 days a year. So that stuff is real. So I think when I remember that, I'm like. At 13, mm. I could have been that girl. That's incredible. And then, you know, just tracking back to 2012, when you decided to start the Penny Libyani Foundation, what, what, a, what was your dream or what still is your dream for the foundation? I think my dream, you know, f for myself, and I'm just trying to use the, the foundation and linking with other organizations, mm. is I really want to li live a legacy. You know, my daughter is going to be seven this coming December. I mean, it's great to be... Penny Libiani, mm. the fly one, you know, you're fabulous and you're wearing nice dresses and you're on Afternoon Express and the yeah, loft and it's great gotcha. and you're on cover magazines. But, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, uh, who's Penny Libiani? What would she ha come here on earth and have done? Do. What is my purpose? And ultimately, I just want to constantly try to remember that to say, I'm here on purpose, I gotta do this and I gotta live a legacy for my kids and then for myself. I love that. And I mean, a couple of years ago as well, you were, you were titled the, the voice of African women while you're still on Muzuago. And do you remember when you got the news and you know, was there a pressure, I mean, you know, uh, kind of appearing on Al Jazeera and s sitting there representing African women. How was that particular moment for you? That moment was a little bit surreal because I got a I phone call. Imagine. I got interviewed by Al Jazeera for like an hour on the phone. I was trying to do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is for like a five minute interview that was going to go on Al Jazeera. And then the, the interview got delayed because Barack Obama was doing a speech. Ah, and I was like, okay, got you. what is this whole thing all about? But I think more than anything else, it was a moment that, that, that reminded me and also um, sort of like, a, you know, Affirm the fact that, yeah. you know, when you sit on a platform yeah. and you say th things and you bring yourself to it, there's people who are listening. Like, your words mm -hmm. are really like seed and then people's minds and hearts are like the soil and then you're planting. So your actions, it's like rain and then you nurturing, you know, I the seed that you've that. planted. So if, you, if you're constantly just saying things and you're spewing them out because it's, it's, it's nice, there's people who are catching on those words. And what are those words doing to those, you know, to those people? And therefore, yeah. in that particular moment, whether... You know, I um, received those words that was, you know, were said to me when, they, you know, I got interviewed in, in Africa. They mm. had another woman in the, in, in the um, Arab world. They had a woman in, in, in the, you know, in, 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 in the different continents, literally representing the moment of like what Oprah had done for, 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 for women as Men a woman's voice. World, yeah. So I didn't really say, oh, that makes me Oprah. <laughs> it just said to me, okay, you have a responsibility here. Are you really going to live up I to this? Yeah. I really, really love that. Yeah. Well, if you have any questions for Penny, we are live. She is going to be in the lot for the rest of the show. So call us, tweet us, do what you need to do. She really is inspirational. I'm more than certain that lots of you watching right now, they want to just ask her a couple of things. But right now, let's move on over to the kitchen with Bonnie. <laughs> it's been such an incredible time today in the loft and it's time to get sweet in the kitchen. This week we're making coconut macaroons, the perfect pairing for your dinner. Easy to make and delicious to eat. We've got our Salati Custer Snow and Lexi from Mamiya Maison and she's here to show us how. Welcome Thanks so Lexi. Thanks for having me in studio today. It's a pleasure, lovely to have you. Awesome. All right, well we're going to start by whipping up our meringue first. So I'm okay. going to scoot you over to the scoot side. I've done a little bit of the, the work to start. So okay. all you're going to do is chuck some egg whites into your mixer. If you've got a hand mixer, you can use that as well. Okay. We're going to turn the beater on. But and it's got to be fast enough to like yes. froth it up. As okay. soon as the egg whites get frothy, you're going to put in a bit of cream of tartar. Mm -hmm. And all that's going to do is when your egg whites are all beaten up beautifully, it's going to hold that lovely firmness. Right, right. Once we've got a, a soft peak, so I'm going to turn this on. Okay. Once we've got a lovely soft peak, so that's as soon as the egg whites have come together, I'm going to put in tablespoon at a mm -hmm. time the sugar. Okay. The reason we do this is so that the sugar can actually melt into the egg into whites the egg and you can get that nice chewy like yeah. when you bite yeah. into it. So I mean, I've seen a variety of macaroons. They all kind of just look different, hey? Yes, I, mean, I always well, thought they were like two pieces of like, like a little mini hamburger. That is, that is the thing. There are two kind of macarons. Uh -huh. There's a Parisian macaron with one O, which is the French kind of macaron, which is the kind you're used to. That's all over Instagram. That comes in all the different colors yeah. and flavors and, yeah. and, and. But this is an American macaron. Mm -hmm. So it's made with coconuts and you can jazz it up or keep it as simple as you like. So it's almost like the ugly sister, but <laughs> as delicious, but I think. Delicious. So yes, yeah. today okay. it's getting its day in the sun. <laughs> so I've added my sugar and mm -hmm. my meringue's whipping up nicely. 
So I'm pretty happy with what we've got over here. Ooh. What I will remind you to do smooth. is as you're whipping up your meringue, you'll see in the bowl here, mm. there's a bit of loose sugar on the side. So okay. what I'm gonna do is just grab my spoon and just make sure that that's all incorporated. Incorporated, yeah. Okay, so yeah. mix that in. I'm gonna put it back in the mixer. Okay. And all we're gonna do is put the beater on a slow speed. Uh -huh. You don't wanna whip all the, the air the up out. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna add our vanilla essence. Okay. Just gonna whip that in once. It smells so incredible. I love the smell of vanilla essence. Then we're gonna throw in just some, this is ground almond meal. Okay. So it's gonna give a lovely nutty flavor. Because okay. I find if you just add coconut, it's quite, it's a bit bland. Mm. So mm. now that the almond is And that comes in, already flaked. Yeah, yeah it comes you already flaked. It's low admin. And then the coconut's going in. Okay. And as soon as that comes together, we're gonna turn it off. Okay, The reason awesome. we do that is if you beat it too much, when you bake the macaroons, they're just gonna go into like fried okay. egg looking shapes. Which so is we're chaotic. about to go on an ad break now, but during the ad break, we're just gonna scoop them up onto the yes, pan. Yes, we're just gonna make little piles. And all the details are on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. We'll see you after the break with the inspiring Shamila Wilson. Another delicious recipe brought to you by Salati Sugar. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Project Ignition was established three years ago to provide leadership training to disadvantaged youngsters between the ages of 16 and 22 in the Western Cape. The program aims to help unleash the passion, potential and power of young people who live with the daily realities of hunger, drugs, gangsterism, poverty, violence. Joining us in the loft is founder of Project Ignition and recipient of the 2015 Inyatelo Award for Women in Philanthropy, Shamila Wilson. Welcome to the loft. Welcome, Thank Shamila. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Shamila, tell us about Project Ignition. What are its objectives? So Project Ignition, as Jenny was saying, was founded to unleash the potential and the power of young people. And I think what makes us different from everybody else is that we focus on the social and emotional competencies of young people. Mm. No way in the education system do young people learn how to deal with resilience, with failure, with any setbacks that they experience in their life. So we just teach them how to be better at being themselves and deal with life's challenges. Yeah. And I can imagine that a lot of these young people, some of them have these setbacks really early on in their lives yeah. and they kind of shape their worldview and the way they see how far they could go in life. How do you deal with all these aspects of their lives? You know, I think what makes us unique is I always say what we do is very simple. We create the spaces where young people get to explore themselves. And I yeah. think it's in exploring that themselves that they get to know, okay, this is my experience, but this is not my only story. Okay, there's more to me than what has happened to me in my past. And so you basically teach them to say, okay, I cannot change what happens to me. I cannot change what had happened to me but I can change what I want to do in the future and I can change how I respond to challenges in the future. So I think we just work with them in terms of being better able to manage themselves um, during turbulent times and uncertainty um, in life, really. You are a life coach and obviously a, ph a philanthropist, yeah. but what was your reasoning for starting Project Ignition? I had started a youth organization about 15 years ago and yeah. at the beginning we had worked just in getting young people to be more responsive to HIV AIDS because at the time there was just this huge outcry saying young people are the most affected. But the problem was nobody was speaking to young people and so myself and a group of other young people, um, people we started this organization that just kind of got young people to figure out what they wanted to do. Um, in our pros programs, we really worked on developing young people to change the world out there. But what was missing, you know, when we were 10 years old, I asked young people that had been through the program, mm. I said, what is it that we had contributed to your life? What could we have done differently? Mm. The major feedback we got from them was the fact that we helped them to change the world around them. We didn't help them to change themselves. And so oh. when we started Project Ignition, the biggest starting point for us is that we teach you how to be an activist in your own life. 
before you can be an activist in the world out there. Exactly. So that so that really draws on life coaching principles. Yeah, yeah. What a great message. And what's your success rate like? Do you have any particular success stories to share with us? You know, every story is a success story. I think, you know, if you sit with me and you sit with my team, um, every story we tell you is a success story. So, for example, you have the young person that he grew up watching his father abusing his mother. And so his response to that when he was 15, he became violent, he would be abusive towards his educators, he was suspended, and even in his interactions with others in the program, he was, you know, very antisocial, very withdrawn. Now he's the life of the party. He has reintegrated back into a mainstream school. He's on the, um, the leadership of the school. Wow. He just got an award. So that's one success story. Another success story is a young man that doesn't feel comfortable in his identity as a male and so has continuously been told in his life that it's not okay for you to dress like a girl, to be like oh. a girl, to be effeminate. After working with him for a while, you know, there was this time where his principal said, we're having this event and can you please just dress like a boy? And he said, you know, at Project Ignition, I can come and dress like a girl because they allow me to be who I am. So, I mean, I think those are the kind of stories we tell. It's when young people own who they are exactly. and they walk in the world tall like that. They can be powerful. They can reach their potential because there's nothing stopping them because they are their own internal voice that they listen to. Yeah. And how is Project Ignition funded? Um, at the moment, it's funded through my consulting work. Wow. Um, you know, we, uh, we are looking for funding. We've established the board. We've established the organization. But I do consulting work, and I have a team of people that I train that are continuously. We work in three schools at the moment, That's and we're incredible. reaching about 200 kids at the moment. We started with 30 um, three years ago, and now we're reaching about 300 kids. And um, so I just go out there making the money and my team goes out there making the change. So wow. I think the combination works. And what's the goal? What's the next goal? The next goal, of course, is um, so we'd obviously like more kids to benefit from this yeah. because we really believe that, um, you know, we have not only kids that are in the schooling system, but those that have dropped out of the schooling system, those that are unemployed that come to us because they've heard of what we do. And they say that we really want to benefit from what you are doing. Um, obviously, there's limited amount that we can do as an organization. So what I've developed is a coaching program. So to train more people to be able to create the kind of spaces and to create the change that we want to do. We don't have to do it all. You know, and I think it's to, to build those kind of partnerships with different organizations so that we do the parts that we're good at and they do the parts that they're great yeah. at yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, so it's like it it's almost <laughs> seems to be like teachers within these schools should Absolutely. be trained by you. Right. So Absolutely. that they can have a better understanding. And, yeah. and so, so what my team does is they go out and they work with the students and I go and work with the school leadership. So I work with the principals and I work with the educators because there's a lot of negativity as well yeah. yes. amongst the educators they have just given up hope that they can yeah, make a difference sure. and so you know the first part is about countering that negativity and yeah. showing them that you know even if you make one difference that is something you know so instead of complaining about the fact that you can't do anything the system is bad that you know there's just so much to do the problems are huge mm -hmm. do something positive and start with yourself. with yourself so we built their capacity to be able to do that yeah what that's really important message. thank you so much for coming through to the loft thank and you well very done much. all the hard work that you're doing i hope that you continually get more positive support thank yeah. you very much thanks for having me well stay right where you are because after the break nomsa treats us to an exclusive performance we'll be right back Give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas. Are you with us? Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. with us here on Afternoon Express on SABC3. Nomi Superstar still in the house with us. Nomi, you're about to perform, but before you start, what can we expect from you? What's coming up? Um, What's on the horizon? So I'm doing a Summer Butterflies tour. I have a new single called Summer Butterflies for the summer. Perfect wow, for the summer. Wow. And, we're and you're doing be... a Sadiq tour? Yeah, so we're going all over Sadiq. We start on the 29th of November at The Rock in Rockville. Um, tickets are on web tickets. 
or my website, nomisuperstar.com. And then we go to Cape Town, we go to Durban, we go to PE, we go to East London, wow. we go to Maputo, we go to Swaziland, we go to Zimbabwe, we go to Tanzania. Then we come back to Durban. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it's a wrap. <laughs> You know what, without further ado, please blow us away, Nomi. Thank you. So get your tickets for Summer Butterflies. <laughs>
band ever. I love, I'm teasing, I love I that song. Oh, wow. good, yeah, I love yeah, that song. Yeah. I'm going to play that song for you tomorrow, Mitch Riffin. Deal? Yay! Yay! Will you send me a shout out? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so earlier on, um, we didn't get a chance to wrap up our macaroon recipe. So all we did really was just put the macaroons in the oven for 15 minutes. And then um, once they were ready, um, we spread some chocolate spread Yay! on it, closed it up. And then oh. it was ready. Voila! Voila! <laughs> very, very simple. Mm. See you tomorrow. Mm. Bye. Cheers. Happy eating. <laughs> Yum. I'm totally eating all of this. Yum. I'm going to have this. Another Feel Good Production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.